I came across this unique chess puzzle online which was composed by Otto Blathe in 1922. I found this very interesting so I thought of sharing it on our channel. You can learn some really important chess concepts from this game so make sure you watch this video till the end. Before I show you the solution, I would suggest you pause the video here and try to find the winning move continuation for white. Okay, I know this was difficult but if you were able to find the solution then congratulations. Let me know in this poll if you were able to solve it or not. Welcome back, I am Jitendra Advani. If this is your first time on this channel and you want to learn some cool chess tricks and become a better chess player then hit that red subscribe button right now and don't forget to tap the bell to turn on all notifications. Okay, so let's start. What should white begin with? It's simple. At the moment, this knight is the only piece that is free to move on different squares. Rest all the pieces are blocked in this area. So first, we will take this dangerous knight with our king. And now if you see, black has only one legal move and that is queen to a1. He will have to keep moving his queen back and forth on these two squares only unless we capture some of his pieces and open up the game. Remember, you cannot move your king because black can move this pawn forward and then this rook and bishop can come out and finish off the game. So we will have to move this pawn. But the first move is very important. Will you move this pawn forward by two squares or just one square? Well, the correct answer is one square. It's based on the idea of calculating moves. I will give you all the details later as to why we move this to h3 and not to h4. So keep watching this video till the end. For the moment, let's keep moving this pawn forward. Okay, now we have reached h7 and it's time to promote. Should we promote it to a queen straight away? Let's try to think logically. Look, even if you get a queen, will you be able to fight against this entire army? I don't think so. So your best bet would be to have a piece which can directly checkmate the king without opening up the game. And for that, a knight would be ideal because it can jump over pieces to take advantage of this locked position. So we under promote to a knight and black as usual moves back to a1. Okay, I hope you're enjoying this video. If yes, then I request you to hit that thumbs up button right now. It really motivates me to provide more quality content on this channel. Moving on, the next question is that how will you mate this black king with your knight? Well, you need to plan out a strategy for that. Let's first identify the squares where you can place your knight to check this king. So we have these four squares, a2, b3, d3 and e2. For each of these squares, you need to identify how you can get your knight there. Let's evaluate each square one by one. Let's take a2 first. So for a2, your knight will first have to come to b4 or c3. The b4 pawn is protected by these three pieces and the c3 pawn is protected by these three pieces. It's almost impossible to get in through here, so we can rule this out. Let's look at e2 now. Getting the knight to this square is easy. But the problem is that this e2 square is defended by these three pieces. And all these three pieces are defended by various other pieces. So again, we won't be able to eliminate these defenders and hence, this mate is also not possible. Let's look at d3 now. Again, getting the knight here is easy, but this square has two defenders. This pawn can still be removed, but eliminating this rook would be impossible because it is protected by this knight, which cannot be captured. So again, this check is also not possible. Let's look at the fourth option, and that is the b3 check. To reach here, you can get through any of these three squares. But the problem is that this rook is defended by this pawn, so we will have to eliminate this pawn first. One more point is that whenever you take this pawn and move your knight away from this square, then this pawn can move forward and support this rook. So basically you need to get rid of both these pawns. We will first get rid of this pawn and then this one. Going the other way around won't work. I will tell you later why this is so. For the moment, let's make our moves. Knight f7, then d8, then e6 and then c5. We simply get our knight to this c5 square. Now we need to eliminate this pawn. So knight e4 then d6 and then finally we capture on c4. Okay, now we need to get our knight to b3. So we play knight a5 and then knight b3 is a beautiful smothered checkmate. But wait, did you realize how precise our timing was? 
I mean, had we been one move late, then this queen would have been here and then this checkmate would not have been possible. Well, this was not a coincidence. It was all about calculating our moves well in advance. In this position, had you played h4 instead of h3, then at the end, this queen would have been on a2. So you couldn't win. Even here, had you gone to take c4 first instead of this c5 pawn, then again, this queen would be on a2 defending this rook and you would never win this game. Okay, so it's puzzle time. In this position, it's your turn and you need to find the best move continuation for white. If you're able to find the solution to this puzzle, then share it in the comments below. I'm reading all your comments and will give them a heart if your explanation is correct. So don't forget to share your answers in the comments. All the best guys, let's see how many of you can solve this. Well, don't forget to like this video and if you haven't yet subscribed, then subscribe now. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in my next video.